Now let's learn the tricks about the tools for fine art. Start with the smudge tool. It picks up color from wherever you start to drag it. On the smudge option palette, move the pressure slider below 100%. Drag the slider to set the pressure or type a single number to set it to a multiple of 10. For example, a value of 25 to set it to 250. Then choose blending mode. The blending modes are on a pull down menu. You can choose, aside from normal, darken, lighten, hue, saturation, color, or luminosity. To use the tool with the foreground color, check the finger painting box. Now you can add some smudged color as you drag. Smudge tool blends two or more colors. Normal to smudge all shades or colors, or dark colors into lighter colors, or lighter colors into darker colors. Set its width by choosing an appropriate brush size. If you selected the finger painting box to be turned off, the smudge starts with the color under the pointer where the stroke begins. By pressing and holding Alt, the finger painting mode is set temporarily. In the chapter, Filter, you will learn more about the effective use of the filter in combination with the smudge and other tools, like the smudge stick filter. Next to the smudge tool, you can find the blur and sharpen tool. The blur tool decreases contrast between pixels. It is very useful to soften edges between shapes. Select the Blur tool. Double-click it to open the Options palette. Options for the Blur and Sharpen tools are much the same as those for Smudge introduced before. You have the same choices of blending mode and the same pressure settings. The Sharpen tool increases contrast between pixels. You can switch temporarily between the Blur tool and the Sharpen tool, and vice versa, by pressing Option, Alt. Each tool keeps its own settings. You can change the size of your brush tool from the Brushes Options palette. For the Blur tool, use a brush with a soft edge, but not for the Sharpen tool. When sharpening, it is good to use a small brush with hard edges so that you have better control of the tool. Zooming in helps a lot too. Do not burn the color or pixels out. Like this example shows, Use medium pressure setting and go only once over the same part of an image. Now you should try out these tools. Open any convenient picture in Photoshop and use the magnifying glass to zoom in on your picture. Choose a soft edged brush from the brush palette window show brushes. Drag across the area of the image that you want to sharpen or blur. After using Blur, switch to the Smudge tool and see for yourself the difference between Blur and Smudge. Practice with these tools at a different pressure settings and with different brushes. Use the toning tools to lighten and darken portions of an image or to brighten colors. The toning tools, like Dodge and its opposite, the Burn tool, affect the contrast between adjacent pixels they either lighten or darken. Burning has the opposite effect to dodging. Instead of lightening a small area, it darkens the area. Photoshop's burn tool icon is a hand shaped to pass a small beam of light. The drop down menu in the tool options palette, double click the tool to open it if it's not already open, gives you three choices, shadows, midtones, and highlights. Now I drag it over the moon. Okay. I will give the full moon a new look by using the other options of the toning tools. As you can recognize, it is more like playing with these tools. Select the highlights when you want to lighten already light colored areas, leaving the dark areas untouched. And then you will stop doing it when it reaches the right tone. There is no limit by trying all choices. Let's work on a new image. I hope your monitor is sharp enough to screen the following changes combinations of both tools or fables. The toning tools are great to enhance an image, but let's go back to painting techniques. 